Time to review another movie that could have been called The Babysitter Murders. The Hand That Rocks the Cradle stars Rebecca De Mornay, Annabella Sciorra, Matt McCoy, and is directed by Curtis Hansen. What's up guys, we're going to be reviewing this movie right here, The Hand That Rocks the Cradle. A very good friend of mine, Brian Lomax, is reviewing this movie at the same time I am. So. We both drop these reviews at the same time. I'll put a link to his review down here. I'll put a card to it too. So be sure to check out his review as well. Uh, because I saw that he was reviewing this movie and I asked him if I could jump in on this one because Hand That Rocks the Cradle kind of has a special place in my heart. It's one of those like red letter movies. You know, one of those movies that brings you right back to a specific point in your life. You see, The Hand That Rocks the Cradle is the last movie I saw in the theater before I joined the Air Force. I saw this movie the night before I went to basic training in January of 1992. And the movie really just knocked my socks off, by the way, it was excellent. But also I just remember when I was sitting there watching this movie, I was kind of scared shitless because I was about to make a major change in my life. You know, I was gonna be going away from home and I'd lived at home uh, in Columbus, Mississippi for you know the last 18 years. So it was, it was a pretty scary time in my life, you know. But I think we all have those moments in our lives where we have to start that next chapter uh, in order to progress. And that's why I joined the Air Force. Also, guys, this will be a spoiler review. So if you haven't seen Hand That Rocks the Cradle, I highly recommend it. But if you don't want to be spoiled, there's really not that much to spoil in this. I mean, it's, it's a woman that is like completely obsessed with tearing this family apart. Also, this review will be dedicated to Tobias Backstrom. He is one of my patrons, uh, and if you are of a certain tier, then you will get a review dedicated to you. But anyway, you can check out all my different tiers over at uh, my Patreon page. But we're gonna talk about this movie, Hand That Rocks the Cradle. And some of you might not have heard of this movie, you know, some of my younger viewers, and I can tell you right now, as far as like obsession movies go, I think this is one of the best. It's really scary at times. And I think the reason it's scary is because it's one of those neighborhood horror types of films, you know, where the danger is right there in your house. That's what I love about this movie. It's kind of like a slow burn home invasion movie. You know, one of those where the main characters in the movie don't realize that the danger is right there in their house, that their home is being invaded. So anyway, let's get into the quick plot synopsis of Hand That Rocks the Cradle. At the beginning of this movie, we are introduced to the Bartell family, uh, Claire, her husband Michael, and the uh, young daughter, Emma. And uh, Claire's pregnant. She, is, she goes to this doctor, Dr. Mott. I'll never forget this scene. Uh, it, it's one of the freakiest scenes because it's so real. Like this stuff probably does happen. But she goes to Dr. Mott, uh, he's the brand new doctor, and he wants to give her a new checkup. And she's like, I'm in the third trimester right now, why are you giving me an exam? And she is basically sexually abused in this scene. And this scene always makes me curious, because I can imagine what a mother in this type of situation would go through. If you were watching this movie, you know, like, what do mothers that are pregnant get out of this scene? It's got to be pretty frightening. But quickly after the scene, we realized that uh, Dr. Mott's wife was Peyton, played by Rebecca De Mornay. And so Dr. Mott ends up killing himself. This is all at the beginning of the movie because Claire pretty much opened the floodgates on this case. She was the first of five people to come forward and state that they were sexually uh, abused by this doctor. And so Peyton, uh, six months later, wants to get revenge on Claire, which is kind of one of my problems with this movie is because if this guy just did it to one person, I might, I might agree with it, but he did it to five victims and you're going to go after one of those victims, Claire being the first one, but that shouldn't really matter. And to go as far as she did. So you can easily like, you know, poke a hole in that plot point right there, but still it's, it's a freaking awesome movie. And so throughout the rest of this movie, Peyton is a genius type of villain because she really like seduces this, this family. She becomes a part of the family and they never dare suspect that she is doing these little things behind the scenes to slowly make their lives unravel and make them fall apart. 
Now, the first thing that I really love about this movie is Rebecca De Mornay's performance because she's completely insane. I remember back when it first came out, like, I think this is even in the trailer, the scene where she's, uh, you know, she's always keeping her composure in front of the Bartels. And uh, then there's one scene where she goes into the bathroom to pretty much vent. And boy, does she vent because she, she takes this, like, plunger or whatever it is and just starts beating the shit out of the, the bathroom stall. We already know she's crazy by this point, but that's the one scene where we see how insane she really is. And one interesting plot point is that uh, Claire has asthma. And so she has this medicine that she ingests and without that, she could die. And, and I thought that was genius to add that to the plot. You know, this, this second element of danger and how Peyton can actually use that uh, in that last act to try to kill her. And the one scene at the end when Peyton goes through and she pretty much empties out all of the canisters. I literally thought she had died in that scene when I saw this in the theater. But also the character Peyton is used in quite a few different ways in this movie. You know, you have the husband. She literally wants to take Claire's place and she wants to seduce the husband throughout this. And, uh, you know, there's that one scene in the kitchen where, you know, she's got like this nightgown on that's wet and she's trying to seduce the husband. But he tells her, you know, there's only one woman for me, but uh, Peyton is so deranged that she thinks the one woman is her. Now, the one scene from this movie that everybody loves that has seen it is the schoolyard scene. And it's the one scene where Peyton is pretty much my hero. Anybody that's had little kids can totally relate to this scene. The character Emma, played by Madeline Zima, who actually looks like this today and was actually in uh, The Collector. She is being bullied by this little kid on the playground. And so Peyton says... Show me this kid. And then she goes to him, and the line she says to him is so friggin' awesome. Ow! I got a message for you, Rod. Leave Emma alone. Look okay. at me. If you don't, I'm gonna rip your fucking head off. And you know, when my kids were little, you know, all kids have bullies. And there were moments where, like, I wanted to beat up a little kid, as silly as it sounds. Not really, but you know, your mind goes there. You are that protective of your own children. So that scene really sticks out above the pack. And Peyton is one of those characters that you love to hate because she's doing all these horrible things and the family, they, don't, they can't see it, but we see it. And so we're like screaming at the family, why are you falling for all this crap that she's putting you through? But, you know, if you don't know that it's going on, then of course you're not going to pick up on it. Don't fuck with me, retard. And you have this mentally challenged character, Solomon, played by Ernie Hudson, who happens to be like one of my favorite characters. If you are, uh, need a character to pull at your heartstrings, uh, nobody does it better than Solomon. Uh, Ernie Hudson does such a great job in this movie, actually. And Solomon, uh, you know, pretty much is separated from the family pretty early on because of Peyton. She pretty much makes Claire think that Solomon is a pedophile. And that is one of my problems with this movie is like Peyton goes to Claire and says, hey, can you go get this tool out of Solomon's toolkit? And she goes there and, and lo and behold, there is her daughter's panties. To me, I think Claire should have picked up on stuff like that. But still, I mean... Peyton does so much damage throughout this movie and it's patient. It's little things along the way. You know, there is a big final third act where she just freaking goes for broke. But I love all these little things that she does to completely like sabotage this family. And you know, this is a really good family. They have a great family dynamic. You know, the, the husband is a, isn't a complete idiot. The problem is Peyton is always two steps ahead of the family. And it works so well. And I'll go ahead and say, I think Peyton is probably one of the most underrated horror characters I think I've ever seen on film. I don't see her talked about enough. Rebecca De Mornay's performance as Peyton, I think is just jaw-dropping. Also, there is another interesting plot element here too with Marlene, played by Julianne Moore. A very young Julianne Moore. But Marlene used to have a relationship with um, Michael. And so Peyton uses yet another element to her advantage, their relationship. And that one scene where uh, Michael's been like planning this surprise party. Honey, you don't understand. I understand, you've been fucking Marlene. All right, Claire, that's enough. And at face value, 
it looks like they're actually having an affair. That's all because of Peyton. But because Peyton is always two steps ahead of everybody, uh, you know, you have scenes like Mar uh, Marlene dying in the uh, greenhouse. You have scenes where Claire can't get to her canisters because Peyton has pretty much emptied out every one of them. So many great elements to this movie. So I've, uh, as far as any cons, I've already mentioned pretty much some of the cons that I, I had with this. I think some of the things were a little bit too easy. Uh, I hadn't seen this movie in a long time and I thought it was going to be a little dated. I don't think it was though. I think still today, Hand That Rocks the Cradle holds up very well. And I think it's one of the better thrillers out there still. So I'm definitely going to give uh, Hand That Rocks the Cradle a purchase worthy. Love the hell out of it. I, I bought the movie just so I could do this review and I'm glad I did because I'm definitely going to be rewatching it again. So anyway, guys, post in the comments your thoughts on the hand that rocks the cradle. Looking forward to hearing them. Also, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks, where we talk horror all day and every day. And on Fridays, we do free for Fridays. If you like what I'm doing, hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and drum them out.